need more berries. I need more berries. Oop, I have an orange though. See? How? Okay, this is a pine tree. How does a pine tree make an orange? What? <laughs> I'm so... I'm so mad. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> that should not be. It should not be. But what happened to my little friend? Just hang out with me. I don't understand. I didn't want them to go away. I thought that they were just there to be my companion. This game is already broke. Yes. <laughs> just like, I love it. It's so cute. Like, I will play it like nobody's business, but oh my goodness. Well, and actually, since we're talking about trees, let's get into today's subject. Today's subject. I'm gonna run, didn't realize my phone was almost dead. Okay, no problem in it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. Good luck on your pay, on your teacher gift and for all the wonderful teachers and stuff. Yes, plant sticks. Yes, this is Fido Nights. But yeah, so plants reproduce in a variety of ways. One way is called asexual reproduction. So class, what does that mean? Oops. Four out of five. <gasps> when two plants love each other very much, actually no, asexual reproduction <laughs> is when there is no sex. It is the absence of love. It is the absence of love. So, quite a few plants, many, 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 can reproduce asexually. And what that means is they don't need a partner. They do, and this is also called, in some cases, vegetative reproduction is one type of asexual reproduction. And that is where you uh, bud. So for example, uh, any plants which have little clones, right? That bud from the base of those, that's a type of asexual reproduction. So I have a, a little succulent called Harriet, which makes little clones of herself, which bud off of the base. And this is a way to one, increase your size, but also survivability to make yourself perennial. So, for example, bananas do this, where bananas have multiple stalks that come off of the same root system. One stalk will make a hand, right, or a bunch of bananas. And once that bunch is made, that stalk dies, but the plant itself is still alive because it makes all these new different stems and stuff. So that's a form of asexual reproduction. Um, there are also some where they make spores. So if you are a fern, for example, um, you can make different kinds of spores. Wait, aren't all bananas clones? Yes, all bananas are clones from the get-go. So I can learn new skills. <gasps> Guys. So at least the bananas in the store are. Okay, there's a reason for that. So the bananas in the store, the yellow ones, if we're all in the US, and these are called Cavendish bananas, is they have, they are a mutant. They have such tiny, tiny, tiny seeds that those seeds are no longer viable. And so you can't even plant them and get a regular banana. So they can only do asexual reproduction now. They can only make clones of each other, right? And so when someone takes a cutting of something, that is also a form of asexual reproduction, which you can then graft onto a different rootstock or plant by using different rooting hormones. Um, at work, I, um,
Yep. So um, at work, I actually um, do uh, tissue culture. And that is a way of artificially doing asexual reproduction where I take different plant tissues and then I put them, I induce them into an embryo-like state, right? So this is called somatic embryogenesis, right? Where I'm taking cells which wouldn't normally be sex cells or embryo cells and then I am in adding hormones and stuff and then for, and having them induced to form and differentiate into a new plant. And so that would be called an explant because that plant has, is not originally from like a seed. And so I actually have some articles here too. So there's also a type of, um, asexual reproduction that dandelions do, which is called apomixis, A-P-O-M-I-X-I-S, as well as other citrus, which is the, they basically, they'll make fruits, they'll make seeds, but those seeds are identical to the parent. They don't require any sex or pollination at all. And so those are almost like just budding little tiny cells, right? Because most of the time to get an embryo, you need, ooh, I got seaweed, guys, ooh. Um, most of the time to get an embryo, you need pollination, which means you need six, which we'll get into six in just a second. Because um, sex in plants is uh, very different than the <laughs> sex in primates, we'll say. Um, gosh, I still need norm berries. Sorry, berry bush. Yes. I know you don't you don't get to hear. So does anyone else have any other um, questions about so so another type of um, asexual reproduction? As I said, we have grafting, we have cuttings. Most of the time, they come from rhizomes. So rhizomes are root structures, underground root structures, which will then spread and then will start to make a new like stalk or plant. So for example, the world's largest tree, right? Well, the world's largest single tree is a quaking aspen um, named Pando. And it is in Utah. And if I double check real quick, because I can't remember this number off the top of my head. It is a clonal colony, right? So many, 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 many trees, right? But it's a single living organism because they're all the same root system. And it is 106 acres or 43 hectares. And so it is about, it weighs about 6,600 6, tons or 6 million kilograms. So it is the heaviest known organism. And so that is a type of, of asexual reproduction, especially because this particular tree, Pando, is a male. And so that's something we can also get into when we're talking about sex and sexual reproduction um yes so q does all the asexual reproduction make things more susceptible to disease slash bugs generally yes so there are so there are pluses and minuses to both so asexual reproduction takes less work than sexual reproduction um and if you are well adapted to your environment, sometimes keeping that same combination of genes is a good thing. Um, because then you are already, you know, good to go, basically. However, if there is no merging of genes, there's no shuffling of genes with another organism, um, if something changes, 
that you aren't prepared for, such as disease, bugs, weather, cataclysm, you're in big trouble. Um, so bacteria, for example, go over, go through asexual reproduction most of the time, where they go through binary fission, which is like you grow, you get bigger, and so sometimes asexual reproduction is all you can do as a plant if there is not another um, compatible partner nearby. Um, now there is another way that plants have gotten around this. Some are able to do what's called self-fertilization, which is um, where, sorry, trying to play the game at the same time. Um, so self-fertilization where you can have an embryo, you have an egg cell, you have a, you know, the pollen grain and that those will fertilize themselves and but that is not the same as cloning because whenever an embryo forms and whenever gametes form so gametes are the sexual like organs or cells right like egg and sperm um the genes get shuffled around and so even though it's the same genes right like the same like source the thing is, is they get shuffled around into different combinations, even during self-fertilization. Uh, thank you, Pasta. I appreciate that. We're talking about gimmicks. And so even in self-fertilization, you it's not as good as sexual reproduction, where, yeah, it's like playing a second game of solitaire, exactly. Exactly. So you may get new combinations. It's exactly like playing a second game of solitaire. You've got the same deck. That's a very good way of looking at it. All right. I'm gonna learn science by gosh. I appreciate it. I appreciate you and I am glad you're here. I am very glad. But. Yes, so we do have, um, so yeah, I don't know if you, if you all see me when I, when I, when I, when I, when I pause and when I'm gesticulating over here, that, that, that's why it's, uh, now, now I'm in the corner. Now I'm in the corner so you can see me gesticulate. Um, I <laughs> don't know if that helps with the teaching, the learning or the teaching experience or not. Um, uh, sorry, we got to do a lot of things. I still don't like that these freaking pine trees make oranges. Um, so is there anything else we want to talk about on asexual reproduction? No sex. Are there anything else that people are wondering about? I am eventually going to, yes. Right now I have some limited less recipes. Yes, I will actually make, I will buy land. I will make my island bigger, but first I need to make money to do so. <laughs> you see in the car, um, actually you can't see um, it cause that's where my little, um, doodad uh my little self sits my, my my face right now um i have no money i have to make money in asexual reproduction is there any limit um it depends So in asexual reproduction, there are certain plants that can just sort of keep going and going and going and going and going, right? Um, but there are some times where you, as you said, you eventually lose viability over time due to most of the time mutation, um, loss of um, 
changes in the genome. So mutation is just a change in the genome, right? It's neither, it, there's, there's no way to predict if it's either bad or good. I'm eating my oranges, guys. Okay, there we go. Um, but eventually you can lose viability, right? Or as you, as, as you um, pointed out earlier, um, when you don't have that mix of genes occurring um, that allows you to adapt to new environments, if things change, then like a disease, like a bug, like a something, right? You could get in really big trouble. How do I do the thing? Whoa. Um, and because you're not adapted, you're not able to adapt to the new environment. So for example, example Pando, who I was talking about, the quaking aspen grove, um, they do believe it is finally dying. Now, it is thousands and thousands and thousands of years old, so, you know, there's... <laughs> You kind of have to take the good with the bad, I guess, is the best way. Is the best way I can I can put it. Because that strategy worked well for a long time, obviously. But no, it's not perfect. Had a good run kind of deal. Yeah, basically. They're not exactly sure why it's dying. Um it could be a variety of reasons. It could be changes. It could be pollution. It could be this. It could be that. Or it's like, or it could just be time, you know, just time for it to go. Whoa, I've got a lot. <laughs> yeah, the dying being it's still got like 200 years it could be who knows how long it will take um plants have a tendency to be dead and not know it particularly trees can be dead and not and and not know it for a very long time they are incredibly resilient um so as you said but it could it could be a whole nother human lifetime uh for example like um, cause I studied the bacteria that causes crown gall disease when I was working on my PhD and like that is, that is a straight up type of plant like cancer. Yep. Plants age differently <laughs> and they can survive a very long time with like cancerous growths and stuff. They will not survive as long as they could have if they didn't have a disease. But um, as I said, they're incredibly resilient. Most of, most of the trees, most of the plants that you see outside, like the tree you yelled at me about. <laughs> Which tree? I yell at people about trees a lot. <laughs> uh. That is something I do, especially different types of trees. All right. Also, my, the one I hacked the branch off of that you thought, yes, I, d I did. Okay, it was very green. It looked like green, fresh wood. So yes, I thought you killed a tree in cold blood and I was unhappy. When you sent me the picture, I'm sorry. It was taken out of context. So sue me. I would never, man. Hey, I didn't know. I am not a mind reader. I don't know these things necessarily. Oh, I gotta eat all the time. All right. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Um. 
I think I need to make a bunch of charcoal. All right. Also, I um, the biodiversity on my island is low and it makes me nervous. <laughs> it makes me nervous, guys. We'll just make a whole bunch. How about like 25? There we go. Makes me nervous. Makes me nervous. There's only one species of tree and one species of bush. How am I supposed to deal with that? All right, everyone, are we ready to talk about sex? <laughs> Pyrolysis, yes. Why, why are we talking about pyrolysis? <laughs> I learned a term, yes. Pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is a good term. Ooze, do you want to tell everyone what pyrolysis is? Yep. Charcoal, man. That is right. Using fire. Using fire to change the form of something. All right. Flowers, spores. Yes, thank you, Ethan, for getting us back on track. Flowers, spores. All right. So first, we've got to talk about the different kinds. Yes. Pyrolysis pulls the moisture out and leaves you with burnable wood. You are correct. Charcoal is not rock. It is wood. You are correct. Coal is rock. And that is made how? How? Anthracite is rock, yes. Sorry, please proceed. <laughs> no, it's fine. We'll talk about chemistry too. Dead dinosaurs. Actually, not dead dino. Well, some dead dinosaurs, but mostly dead plants. It is mostly dead plants. Mostly dead ferns, fern-like things. That is... what coal came from and algae and other things from long long ago and actually speaking of algae let's talk about that let's talk about algae sucs. um so aquatic plants aquatic plants have both eggs and sperm like humans do like mammals do like many other organisms do and the um, sperm is just released into the water okay and then floats with the current to a receptive partner um, and that is how the algae do right and other aquatic plants. Now, that is also what many fish do as well. Sea urchins, jellyfish, corals, you name it. So, um, sorry everyone if this um, bothers you, but it's like if you swam in water that wasn't a pool, yeah, you're, you're, you're swimming in somebody's sperm. <laughs> Some somebody's sperm there. <laughs> just accept it. It is life. It is just how it is. And so that is a very efficient way of doing it. So um, we should also probably say that life, life, life started in the ocean. In the ocean. I can't make money yet. I don't have the recipe. Oh, 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 you wound me, you wound me. How do I do this then? Shoot. 
think I've got to keep putting things in my furnace. How do I make brick? Okay. Cool. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Don't give me all this gold and it won't let me make money. Won't let me make money and then I can't buy more islands. See? This is this is this isn't fair. This isn't fair. I pro I, I protest. I protest. So does anyone have any other questions about aquatic plants? And how they work and how they do. Van Halen is a rock, however, I shall I shall not use them to heat my food. Well, I mean, not with that kind of attitude. I mean, really. Oh, I lost everyone. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Melt face, yeah, cook hot dog, no. You got it correct. I'm getting sand. What do I use the sand for? Hmm. Cooked meat, cooked bread, iron. Sand to make glass? I think so. But I don't have a recipe for that yet. I'd like to think so, yes. I'm glad that this um, this island is so prolific. Um, it's just popping up new trees like nobody's business because otherwise I'd feel even more of an eco-terrorist. Like, for sure. Okay, so any more questions about aquatic plants? Going once, going twice. Just double checking real quick. Are we ready to move to land? Are we ready to move to land where life moved? Life moved to land? Are we ready to move to land and talk about seed plants? Evolve, this niche is empty, yeah. Feet, yes. We are ready. Now, time to talk about, well, actually, we, we can't even get to seed plant yet. Now we just have to move to land. So we have moved to land, we're no longer in the water. We have moved to land, we are no longer in the water, and we have become a bryophyte. What's a bryophyte, everybody? You get extra special points if you know and don't Google it like a cheater. Briophyte, yes. B R Y F H Y T E. Briophyte. A pre fern? Not a pre fern. I'm going to give you credit, ooze. A briophyte is a fern and its other relatives. Mosses of the taxonomic division bryophyte are small, non-vascular flowerless plants that typically form dense green clumps or mats, often in damp or shady conditions. I did not Google it. There's, then you got it off of Wikipedia because you never speak like that. I have spoken to you and I've read what you write and you never, ever, ever <laughs> sound like that or write like that <laughs> in, all, in the time I've known you. <laughs> So briophytes are actually, so ferns don't quite fall into briophytes, but they are, as you said, sort of pre-fern or similar. Um, you have what are called liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. And so they can produce both sexually and vegetatively. They are closer to aquatic plants on how they do it. So there are female like mosses and there are male mosses um and so 
they need to be in wet environments for the sperm to be able to spread to a partner, right? So they have to be in wet environments to swim, usually a thin film of water, which is one of the reasons that you find mosses and hornworts and liverworts in these sort of damp places. Why do I see bits of purple in moss sometimes? Um, well, what does it look like? Is it like the vegetative tissue? Like the leaves are a different color? Or is it like the spores? Very, very small, but bright purple leaves. Um, hmm, that could be for a variety of reasons. Um, that could also so ferns and mosses and liverworts and hornworts go also go through something called altern alteration alternative generations right where one generation so not every generation can have sex or have babies so what will happen is that the there can be small um uh sexual the sexually mature form are these really little um uh plant-like structures called uh gemini um or something similar to that uh i should double check that is so they have both sets of chromosomes and then the larger one like a fern, for example, is a sporophyte. Um, wait, wait, wait. I may have been missing out on something, guys. Instantly gain. I learned a thing. Whoa. Skill time. Yes. Gain four inventory slots. skill time real quick mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Da, da, da. oh I'm out of spill points never mind the cute little tree though I like it I should try to buy land and expand oh I do have money now okay Sure, we'll do that, little person. Uh, that one's 60, that one's 30, that one's 80. All right, everybody. We're expanding. <gasps> I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat. Still haven't figured out how to combine my seaweed together. Yeah, they just jam out all the time, just like. But yeah, so you have what's called alteration, alternative generations, where the where the sporophyte, right? So the so fern comes from a spore, right? And it only has half of the genetics you need. Woo! Oh no, no, guys, I'm going to die. Oh no. Me 
It might be a you. It could be. But yes, I got attacked by an ooze. How dare. How dare. See, it's dangerous. It's dangerous expanding. All right. Now let's see if I can do this. Okay, I still want to... Fine. Craft all of these. But, yep, so you get what's called alter alternative generations. And that is where you have the sporophyte, which is the fern itself that creates spores, which are diploid in nature means they have both sets of chromosomes, two sets of chromosomes, and those are the ones that have... and when you have that final um, form, then they can have, um, which is, that is the reproductive phase. And so that's technically like the next generation. So you get this alternative of generations. Um, and so those are the ones that the that produce sperm or have eggs and then those sperm will swim to a partner and so that's what's most similar to you know humans and other animals and stuff like that how do i heal <laughs> that would be good that one will give me one heart that won't give me any hearts that won't give me any hearts Substance that can be used for crafting. Mm. Okay, I guess we'll get to eat some fish. There we go. Cool. Ooh, look, wheat. Nice. I like how we just have a pickaxe for everything. <laughs> do we want? Do we want to? Um, Ooh, there's a guy over here. Oh no. <laughs> no. I don't I don't. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No. There we go. He's got tops, yes. Oh no, we're in trouble now. We are in trouble now. But yes, so that is, so those plants, their sperm is similar to human sperm. It's got a tail, it's got flagella, it can move around, you know, but it requires water because plants are immobile. Well, some are, but that that is different. Most plants are immobile. They move some, but move, um, plants do move, but they move in place. Um, unless you are a carnivorous plant, but that is something we can talk about at a different time. I will do a more, actually we could have whole streams on different types of carnivorous plants. Um, like, very easily. Okay, building. Fiber forge? Where do I want to put my forge? I'll put my forge down here. Why not? Perfect. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What I figured out is fish is the way to go. Being a pescatarian is the way to go. That's what we are right now, pescatarians.
<laughs> so now we've moved on land. We have land. We have moved on land. And now we have talked about the more basic levels of sexual reproduction. Are we ready? Are we ready, folks? To go to the next stage. <sighs> Level six. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Now I can see now this is what I should have done. We're ready. I should have made money. Should have made a forge earlier to make money. This is how I messed it up. I messed it up. Here, everyone, take a drink. Excellent. All right. Now we are going to move on to uh, seed plants. I am back and I'm ready. Yes. So now we are going to move on to seed plants. So those bryophytes I talked about, um, they have no seeds. They reproduce via spores. Now, the next thing to have evolved were seed plants, which includes our pine trees here, even if they make oranges. Um, they do not have flowers. They have what are called cones. And the cones have the different sexual reproductive parts. But now, instead of having to rely on water to move our sperm to a plant, a receptive plant, or eggs. Now we have wind. And so that is what evolved next, was to have wind dispersed sperm, AKA, what word am I, what, what word am I looking for, guys? Wind dispersed sperm. I haven't gotten any answers yet. Aerosperms? No. Nope. It, it is something everyone knows. It is something that you deal with every day and don't even think about. Nope. Pollen. Yes. Pollen is wind dispersed sperm. Good job, Pasta. So. Now that time I believe you. So there are a variety of different plants. So if we talk about uh, pine trees, for example, we have, they are also known as gymnosperms, okay? And so gymnosperms can be male or female or both, but they do not have flowers per se, which I am triple checking. And so the thing is, is they have seeds. So this is basically their seed plant, but they don't have, they, the seeds aren't protected by an ovary or a fruit, right? And so these are conifers, these are cycads, ginkgos, okay? And so they are also sort of the seed producing plant. And so the technical term, what it means is they are naked seeds, right? There are no fruits involved, but they all have cones. And that was next to evolve and they are wind pollinated. But do undergo sexual reproduction where the pollen will interact with the ovary or the egg cells and then will make the seed. Now seed, who knows what um, major parts make up a seed? Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. Actually, I need to check out. I used to know this. Well, you have the uh, slime pickaxe. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Knowledge blew away with the arrow sperm with the pollen. <laughs> oh, gosh. Iron ingots. Oh, I could make a shovel. Dig up dirt to plant crops or find items. Okay, cool. Endosperm, embryo, and something else. It's just the seed coat. Good job, booze. Just the seed coat. You're good. Inside the seed coat can sometimes be a jelly-like substance called mucilage, which is just sticky. Helps them stick to things. I actually did some study of mucilage in my younger days. In my younger days. When I was but a wee fighter getting my degree in genetics. And the long ago for four times. If you are an angiosperm, which is what most plants are, at least most modern day plants. So, mo so back in the dinosaur days, most things were either ferns, um, bryophytes, gymnosperms, the pre-pasta era, yes. No, 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 it hurt me. Um, the pre-pasta era. You, sorry, what was that? Where was I going with that? That was in dinosaur time. So most coal nowadays, dead plants or whatever, was made from ferns. So, there, so ferns and other fern-like species were actually much larger then than they are now. They got smaller over evolutionary time. So these were like ferns, which were, I mean, uh, the size of trees, like modern day trees. Um, but then over time, there were more woody plants that evolved that way. I actually need to go and probably talk to my new neighbor. No! This isn't good, guys. I'm in trouble. No, don't hit me. Don't hurt me. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no, guys! Oh, no. Is this okay? Really gonna go? <laughs> gonna get distracted. I got distracted. All right. Oh, good. I didn't have to save during stuff. Ooh, I'm gonna get you. There we go. Hey, never what to do about these ears. <laughs> I am the HOA, yes. No, oh, go away. I need to eat something. I need to eat something before they hurt me. Oh no, I don't have any fish. Maybe if I sneak over here. Sneak over here and avoid him. Then I'll be okay. Ooh. There we go. Ha ha. I got him. <laughs> I did it, guys. I'm successful. Oh boy. But. So next we have angiosperms. Our flowering plants. Which have fruit. 
fruit that we all lo know and love. Also known as carpal tissue. So basically it's the, so the classic sort of shape. Oops, just ate raw fish, nice. Why does it do that? Yum yum fruits, right. So carpal tissue is what we're talking about. So the classic sort of shape of the flower is you have this cylindrical structure called the pistil, right? Which comes down and makes sort of this round, like bell-like teardrop shape at the bottom. Um, that is where you have the germansium is this whole structure. Inside is where the ovaries are. And that bottom part, right, will swell and form the fruit once it's fertilized. And so at the top of the pistil, the pollen drops on the top or the stigma, which is the sticky part on the end here, right? And those pollen, each pollen grain has two sperm cells in it, okay? So this is important to remember. And that pollen grain will form a tube which grows down into the um, pistil. And as that sort of forces its way down, it will go into this bottom part and then will interact with those egg cells down there. And so one sperm will um, fertilize, an over, fertilize an egg cell, right? Versus another sperm will fertilize this, what's called a nursing cell, nursery cell. It already has two sets of chromosomes, so it will have three at the end, and that becomes the endosperm of the seed. So if I double check real quick. So this is called double fertilization. So there are two fertilization events occur during sexual reproduction. Just triple checking, I don't want to tell you something inaccurate. If my tab will load. <laughs> All right, now I'll go talk to my neighbor. Radish. Just the person I was waiting for, really? Natural resources are being exploited by little jerks with pickaxes. Oh no, that's not me. I need you to bring me two torch bugs so I can keep them safe from harm. Yeah. Okay. I need to get a, uh, I need to figure out how to make a bottle guys. glass little jerks with pickaxes see I told you I was an eco-terrorist I knew it how do I make glass Ooh. so does anyone else have any questions about how this double fertilization works My tablet's being super slow, so we're going to ask the phone to do it. And so double fertilization only occurs in these flowering plants or angiosperms, which is the majority of the plants that we see outside. Um, and so that is the joining, you know, of the female or mega gametophyte, right, with the sperm, which two male gametes, two sperm. And so, as I said, it's the pollen grain it adheres to the stigma of the carpal, grows down into it, and then gets into the reproductive structure. So, 
Most unfertilized ovules, there are about eight in number and they're arranged in sort of a loop. And so you have two polar central cells, two antipodal cells, one egg cell, and two cernage. So we have those are all those other types of cells are called nursery cells, okay? And so, okay, so that's what I got wrong earlier. So one sperm, it fertilizes the one egg versus another sperm combines with the two polar nuclei in the big central cell. And that makes your mega gametophyte, right? And that will turn into the endosperm. And so the endosperm is kind of like in a seed is kind of like the yolk in an egg, like a chicken egg. And that feeds the embryo. Now, when a human is born, we have all of our parts, basically. All of our organs, everything like that. When a plant is born, it just has like the embryo, the endosperm, and it only has three major organs. There's the cotyledons, which are like tree um, leadies. There's the hypocotyl, which is like a pre sort of stem like structure, and the radical, which is a pre sort of root structure. And then there are two sets of stem cells. Okay, so the stem cells in humans, the cells that can turn into anything, those were originally discovered in plants. If anyone else tells you different, they're a liar or they're ignorant. Um, and they were named after cells discovered in, guess what, the stems of plants. And so there are, there's the shoot group of stem cells called the apical meristem or shoot meristem and that's where all the new aerial structures aerial meaning air grow out of so branches leaves you know and eventually reproductive organs right so flowers and stuff so some of those will divide and differentiate into a reproductive meristem which will then make your flowers which will then make your seeds and so on and so forth and then there's the root apical meristem at the bottom of the radical. There's a root cap. So there's a cap of cells, of dead cells, which help protect the meristem and slough off as the root pushes down into the um, dirt. But then they differentiate into new root cells and new root hairs and so on and so forth. And so Plants are not born with all of their organs, they develop them over time. Unlike us where we are born with any of the organs we need. How do I make glass? <laughs> oh, how frustrating. I think I'm going to have to get up like, I'm going to have to use my skill tree or something. All right, skills, accessories, feats. Oh, no, I have not achieved anything. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Unlocks glass. See, this would help if I read. See? It's almost like it was designed. Dear game, this is hurtful and I don't appreciate your feedback. <laughs> no, it's a deer game. Have I seen the deers? Oh, I need more coal. See, this would not technically be coal. This would be charcoal, which was under... which underwent pyrolysis our new favorite word oh my phone will, ne will never understand my accent <laughs> get it together phone get it together how dare you phone uh 
Okay, so uh, we should probably talk about gender in plants, right? We want to talk about plant gender? Oh, does everyone like my barrette? Blender. Not exactly. It's still called gender, but. <laughs> yep, I got this at Gen Con uh, ooh, several years ago. And yes, if anyone is wondering, for those very Star Trek nerds out there, um, this is the Star Trek symbol for science. And the colors for a science officer. Yep. I'm that person. All right. Now we can make glass. Yes. Craft. Do, 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 do. All right. So if we're ready to talk about gender, so um, angiosperms are flowering plants. A lot of them are hermaphroditic, which means male and female. So the flower has both stamens, which are the male part, and then it has the stigma, right? The stigma, carpal, germansium area, right? Which is the female part and contains. So that's why some plants can self-fertilize, right? Which is the pollen from the stamens can... Um, get stuck on the same stigma, the same flower, go down and fertilize that plant. And as you said, it's like, as, as Ooze so went po pointed out, um, they do, um, it's like playing a second game of solitaire with the same deck. You do get gene shuffling, but it is not preferred. Um, not every plant, not every plant can self-fertilize, okay? Even if they are hermaphroditic, Sometimes that that fertilization won't occur or is inhibited or be unviable. This is what we call an obligate. Obligate means obligated outcrosser, right? So for example, alfalfa is an obligate outcrossing crop. It has to cross, it has to be fertilized by another plant, another individual, even if it has the same bits. I do not know if they have two Tinder accounts. You would have to ask. Oh, I need thread. <laughs> no. I need more skills. I need more skills to be able to get thread because I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Let's double check this again. In the skill tree. That this unlocks Unlocks steel, unlocks glass. Cooking. Ooh. Magic. <laughs> Plant tinder, I'm viable. I love the office. I'm 15 foot 10 inches. Yeah, could be that way. Let's see if we can figure out how to make how to make Fred. I know I've got spike trap. Interesting. Still need thread for that. Reach. Sewing station. Fiber. See, this is what happens. Back to reading. <laughs> Back to if I read stuff. Perfect. All right. So as I said, we have obligate outcrossers. Um, but there are also... Um, plants which are male or female. 
instructions are for just for people who don't know what they're doing. I am not part of that school. <laughs> I, I, I'm a scientist, which means I read a lot. I read a lot and I read what other people do a lot of the time to make sure that I don't do the same thing over that has already been done and waste time like a dummy. <laughs> Now, still great to learn by doing, for sure. But I am the first to admit that I don't know what I'm doing. The majority of the time. Sigh. Sigh in for instructions in four hour chair assembly. Indeed, indeed. Protocols and instructions exist for a reason. Procedures exist for a reason. Now, I'm not saying they can't be changed, but they do exist for a reason. Yay, I'm going to make a bottle. Making a bottle. Now I just got to go and catch a boog. Go and catch a boog. Oh no, running. See, I feel like my, my, my neighbor is not going to like me very much. I still feel like an eco-terrorist. Although, I did notice something that this game does do well. Did you notice that the more I cleared out trees, the more flowers and other things I got? Anyone have any idea why that is? Trees aren't hogging resources. Resources, but mostly, yes, sun. <laughs> the big thing is sun. Yes, that goes back to the we drown out other things so we strive thing. Inde so, uh, indeed, 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 indeed it do. Indeed it do. No, go away, no. See, this is this hit and run tactics. Ooze, when you fight me, I have to use hit and run tactics. Otherwise I'm in trouble. <gasps> Another level, oh boy, oh boy. I hope it can't attack me while I'm doing the skill tree. Unlock cook pox, sugar, mayo, cheese. Okay. I'm ready. Gluttony. <laughs> yes, indeed. That was from lots of streams ago where they made sure that tree babies go far away. That's true. That is true. Pine trees do that using chemical inhib inhibition. So beech, tree beech trees limit the amount of light that their children can have. And so and get grown up to be short but they save their energy so then as soon as the mother tree dies then the children can very quickly grow up shoot up and fill the space before other fast growing species like these flowers for instance get in the way does that make sense Bread, flour, cooked meat, and so now pine trees do something different, which is called chemical inhibition. So basically, they release. 
gonna catch myself a bug, guys. Come here. Ha! -ha I got one. Um, so they use chemical inhibition, whereas they release chemicals into the soil and those prevent germination or prevent the seed from actually being able to um, release from and break out of the seed coat. You know, basically germination is like hatching, <laughs> like, a, like a little baby chick hatching from an egg. It's not exactly the same, but you get the drift. <laughs> Okay, I will eat. How do I do a cook? How do I do a cook? Cook pot. That is how I do a cook. Yes, I know you're hungry, darling. Okay, so what stuff do I need? Forge, farming, cook pot, brick and coal. Got it. Brick. Let's just make a whole bunch. Why the heck not? Smells like fire used for fire. It's nice. Nice. Uh. Mm. And there are other plants that do chemical inhibition of... Um, so one of the reasons honeysuckle is such a big problem, Japanese honeysuckle in particular, and garlic mustard, which are invasive species here in the U.S., um, is that they um, release... Um, sort of, you know, toxic chemicals that inhibit other plants and other plant growth into the soil around them to reduce competition. Um, and so I'm pretty sure the term for it is allelopathic. Allelo. Yes. Um, Allelo... Allelopathic, yeah, or allelopathy, chemical inhibition of one plant or organism or another due to release of environment substance, um, substances acting on germination or growth inhibitors. Okay. Now, do we have any other questions about double fertilization, flowers, vegetative propagation, where it's no sex. Whoops. Ah, I don't know. Oh, it just went automatically 10. Okay, that makes sense. Those are basically the major things I want to cover. Um, otherwise, we're going to get into some really specific stuff. Um, but yeah, there are, so for example, the quaking aspen I talked about, that there are male and female flowering plants. Um, and so 
Those, if you don't have the correct opposite sex near you, um, tend to go through vegetative propagation. So those rhizomes, those root structures that go out. You also have runners, which are over the dirt instead of under the dirt. So that's how strawberries propagate. So it's like little stems that go across the way and then you've got different fruits um, and different flowers that come out of those, but those are all clonal as well. They're all the same genetics. Um, hmm. But yeah, for example, there is, there's a species of moss, I believe, or bryophyte, which is only found in two places on earth. One is in the US and one is in Europe. They're both on top of a mountain and they're clonal, right? They're all the same genetics, but one is a male and one is a female. So the thought was is that sometime thousands of years ago they were near each other and then they were near each other or there was a bigger population that then got separated and now they will eventually go extinct just because one could never breed with the other because they are little literal continents away from each other. And they have been vegetatively propagating, right, just cloning themselves over thousands and thousands of years. So it's very fascinating. And I'm and um, there is sort of a thought that there there certainly has to be more um, examples of that throughout nature that aren't just. Um, that aren't just limited to mosses and other plants. Um, and that was something that, um, I can't remember if I talked about the, this on the stream or if I talked about this during my podcast. Maybe I should ask. So have we, during a drink and think before, have we talked about speciation? Like what constitutes a species? have not heard it. Okay. Thank you for the critters. You may keep these magic scrolls as a reward. Nice. Druid helper. See, I want to be a helper of a druid. I want to be a druid myself. I don't want to be an eco-terrorist. Okay, so species form because of um, the division of different genetics, right? And so, different things that constitute a species, right, as they diverge over evolutionary time can occur from uh, three different ways, okay? One is spatial. So, for example, um, a population, even though it may be compatible, right? Genetically compatible, they are separate species and will not breed with one another because they are spatially far apart. And so this includes your, so sorry, I'm, Still need more coal and more brick. Darn. Okay. So, spatially apart. So this would include like these two populations of, you know, mosses, for example, are so far apart that they'll never be able to breed with each other, right? Um, like, there are horse-like, you know, there are many different types of antelope, right? Um, that have evolved over time in different places, but they are technically separate species because they were spatially separated from one another. Um, versus if you've got 
uh, a, a horse-like entity. For example, um, and then you have uh, like emus and ostrich, right? That's an example of two giant flightless birds, but they of course evolved in very different places, right? Because emus are from South America, you have ostriches from Africa. And that is also an example of convergent evolution, which we've talked about convergent evolution a little bit last time. But if Ethan's listening to this, if we're not careful, he's going, he's going to bust in here like Kool-Aid um, to talk about convergent evolution. Um, but we also have... <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I said convergent evolution and then Ethan, and Ethan started screaming screaming from across the, across the house uh actually i'm suspecting him to come down here because i because no one else can hear him but me uh wow yeah so <laughs> the drink is to get your own nerd stream yep no the thing is is all he'll all he'll do is talk about one thing it's going to be crab talk all the time. All right, beat. It doesn't seem to constantly profuse, profuse its love to you. Okay. Interesting. Well, I will eat more beets. But, yeah, so that's spatial speciation they are far apart from one another so you can have populations so different populations of plants have gotten divided over time and have evolved differently and become separate species because they can no longer have genetic material crossed between each other because they are separated by land space distance then you can have um genetic um factors so for example a horse and a donkey a horse and a donkey can hybridize to make a mule, but they are considered separate species because that mule, that hybrid is not viable, it is sterile. It cannot have its own children, it cannot have its own babies, right? And so that is a genetic limitation, right? Where it's like they're two separate species because genetically they are not compatible, they cannot have a viable offspring, right? A viable sexually mature offspring, like the offspring itself is alive but it cannot have babies that is a dead end right offspring and so that is for genetic reasons that you can are different species and are separated i need to make a bunch more charcoal and brick why does a cooking pot take so much <laughs> so much Um, and then you can have what are called temporal reasons. So temporal reason means timing, time. So say for example, they don't breed in the same season, they would never breed with each other, right? So you can have different, there's different species of mayfly. So mayflies are insects which, um, uh, come out in May, early spring. There's a bunch of them, right? And the thing is, the reason that they're different species is some may breed in May, but then other ones may breed later in the summer, like right now in June. And because their biological clocks are different, they will never swap genetics, right? And so they become separate species. And so they are temporally separated, okay? So does that make sense? So you can have, um, so when we talk about different species and species rarity, right? Sometimes that occurs because they're either endangered because of loss of habitat, pollution, disease, other natural cataclysms, you name it. But also sometimes they are just rare in general because they are highly specialized. So you can have, if a species is only found in a particular area, it's called endemic, right? 
where it's the it's limited to this particular area because it has become highly specialized to live a certain way. So for example, since Ooze is here, a plant near from where he lives and grew up is a Venus flytrap. The Venus flytrap is highly specialized and lives in bogs, right? and evolved in South Carolina, in the US. And so because of that, it is endemic to that area because it became highly specialized type of niche being in this sort of bog-like environment, which is very nutrient poor that had to figure out a different way to get nitrogen. And so it, ev it actually evolved to hunt. And so it has these different, you know, leafy traps. And everyone basically knows what a Venus flytrap looks like. What is interesting though, is even though it is one of the most famous types of traps, besides an aquatic water wheel, which has a similar sort of trap, it is the only plant that, it, it is the only species, there's like two species of Venus flytrap, I think, the only species that catches prey that way. It is actually a very rare type of carnivorous plant, even if it's the most famous. Um, the most common design for carnivorous plants are pitcher plants. So those are pitfall traps. And so does everyone know what I mean when I talk about a pitcher plant? Can I do a cook pot? I think everyone's left me, Everyone, everyone's chilled out. Nepenthes, yes. Thank you, Ethan, thank you for being here for me. <laughs> Nepenthes, 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 Nepenthes. Different um, genre of the pitcher print. Pitcher print, whoa, whoa. All right, I have enough bricks to make a cook pot, yay. Sorry, googling Pokemon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Boom. Okay. What is this? I need to look at this Pokemon. Yes. You are correct. That is that is the the Victory Bell. Victory Bell Pokemon. is a pitcher plant. Now, some pitcher plants do have fangs like that. There is a vampire pitcher plant, I'm pretty sure. If you, if Mr. Googler, if you wanna look that up for me and, and share that with the class. We need to make more charcoal, by the way. I don't want to kill all of my trees. I don't like it. Good thing they just occur. Let's see. Vampire pitcher plant. Yes! Excellent. Also, anyone here who plays in a... Which I think a lot of people in here who, who are keeping me company play with my... Uh, play in my uh, small folk D&D &D games. There are bats which sleep in those guys. And it's very cute. And it's a nice safe place to sleep at night because they will sleep on the inside of the pitcher plant and get their little feet, right? And then we'll be on the inside, right? And we'll hide in there, nice and cozy. Inside the vampire pitcher plant. I'm not sure, I need to read up on vampire pitcher plants a little bit more to see what the, the, the fangs, quote unquote, um, what their function is. But it's very fun. All right. Need to make more coal. Actually, I'm a little disappointed. Ethan, Ethan didn't come down here and go on his convergent evolution rant. <laughs> also... Ethan doesn't have a nerdy stream because he makes podcasts with me.
Playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Yep, I'm busy. Okay, that's fine. Not a problem. Mom called. No, not a problem at all. I don't know. Um, Ooze, did you miss our um, speciation talk because you had to take your call or not? Yeah, okay. Don't worry. I can do it again. I'm fine with doing that again. Ooh, no. There we go. I can, I can do, I can do that again. Don't you worry. So, um, different things that cause speciation, so species to change from each other are number one, genetic differences, right? So a mule and a horse are different species because any progeny they have, any babies they have are not viable, okay? So, Even though, for example, you will have like a mule, which occurs from that coupling, is an animal that, you know, that can, you know, is still like living and alive and whatever. The thing is, is that uh, it cannot have viable offspring it cannot have babies it cannot reproduce and so that is considered like a dead end basically oh i need more health i'm going to have to use some of my coal to cook this fish there's it is unavoidable shoot um so that are those are speciated for genetic reasons Right, they are no, they no longer are compatible with each other because they have become different enough that they cannot have viable offspring. Then you have spatial reasons. So it's the two different species populations are divided by just distance. And so then they can no longer interact and exchange genes. So they become separate species, even if in theory they could hybridize. Um, so and then you have temporal reasons so that they breed at different times all right okay slime you better not attack me while i'm eating Ooh. water hit and run hit and run there we go And so, because they breed at different times of the year, they will never overlap. Their biological clocks don't overlap, and so then, therefore, they will not exchange genes or are not able to exchange genes. This happens in insects a lot. And can happen in plants, too, where they flower at different times, right? And so you won't get pollination or you won't get um, genetic um, mixing. Does anyone else have any questions about plant six? Or not six. <laughs> so this is very, um, very general. Um, there are always lots of exceptions to everything. I hope I have covered the majority of stuff um, in different types. So if we want to review um, aquatic plants have egg and sperm requires water the sperm is just released into the water where it finds the other plant you know and is moved by the currents then once we get to land plants we now have uh bryophytes which are liverworts our mosses our hornworts right which are work the same way um and they require water to be able to have a thin film of water, at least for the sperm to be able to move, right? And swim to a receptive partner. Um, you And also in the non-seed plants, you have ferns, right? And so ferns make spores instead of seeds. And they have that alteration of generations that we talked about. And they also have a similar sort of, you know, 
eggs and sperm require water, you know, to move around. Um, then next to evolve was wind dispersed sperm or pollen. Okay. And then that's when we get into the seed plants. So then first we have gymnosperms, which are our pine trees, our conifers, our other cycads, and they have cones, right? And we have different males and females. And so that required wind to be able to make and disperse. But they do not have a fruit, right? The seeds are themselves sort of naked, right, within the clone. So, like, gymnosperm literally means, like, naked seed, okay? Man, I need more trees, guys. Trees are a problem. But I don't want to go over to the druid's island and take his trees because he's going to get really mad at me. And then next we have our flowering plants. So those are our angiosperms. And they're the ones which I did. I didn't want to. It is forcing me to be this eco-terrorist. Where it's like, you need coal. You need charcoal. You need this. You need that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Because it's making me make a lot of charcoal. I don't want to steal from the locals. I don't. So then we have angiosperms. And so angiosperms are our flowering plants. And so they make flowers and that the bottom of the flower, right, becomes the carpal, the carpal tissue, which becomes the fruit, right? So those are your apples or tomatoes or whatever. And the seeds are on the inside, okay? And these are many of them, not all, but many of them are hermaphroditic. So they have both male and female parts, but you also have male and female plants. Some are, can self-fertilize, which means they're self-compatible. So the same flower can fertilize. So the male parts can fertilize the female parts of the same flower. But as you said, that's the same genetics, right? It's just reshuffling them around in the combinations by playing solitaire, a second game of solitaire with the same deck. And then you finally have the sexual reproduction of pollen from a different plant, um, landing on the stigma of a flower, the pollen tube growing down and then going through double fertilization, right? Where there are two sperm cells within the pollen. One fertilizes an egg cell. The other one fertilizes these different, two different polar nuclei, which there's other nurse cells and it gets kind of complicated. But those basically become the endosperm, right? Of the plant, which is kind of, of the seed, which is almost like a yolk in an egg. And that that embryo and seed will develop and then those seeds are inside of the carpal tissue or the fruit right and so those are your angiosperms okay that was really fast <laughs> is there any other questions questions comments Oh, does everyone see the baby? See the baby? He came down with milk. May I hold the baby? You are welcome to hold the baby. I hold the baby? Assuming he will Hi, baby. come to you and stay. Maybe. <laughs> he goes, no, I'm only daddy's boy. He says, it's father's day. It's father's day. day. I'm only daddy's boy. Ooh. <laughs> okay. No, fine. Okay. Go back to daddy. You come on. Only love daddy. Why are you so upset for? Yeah. My my baby isn't here. My my He's baby asleep. is my baby has shunned me. He's asleep. He's on a tree. Oh, okay. He's definitely on a tree. I don't know where he's going, but probably over there. Resource gathering equals die, nature. Except I told you. It's like all of these different games, even if they're cute little farming games, it's just a bunch of eco-terrorism. I swear. With the ooze torture, yes. And then we will wrap up for today. I'll see you all next month.
we can decide what we want to talk about then. Because actually, whoop, I should have made this announcement earlier when there were more people around. Is next month, I will be having a guest speaker. Uh, so for those who are involved in the Shadow Council, um, we are going to have Gamma Liz, Dr. Liz, um, coming on the stream with me. Um, she is an astrophysicist who works at NASA. And she's going to hang out with me and we are going to talk about astrobiology. So biology in space. And part of or plants in space, <laughs> as well as life on other worlds. So I hope you'll join me for that. Um, currently, I'm going to double check, but we've got that scheduled for. Da -da -da. Checking my calendar real quick. So next month's stream, that's going to be scheduled for the 19th. Okay, so 19th, same time. We are going to get to hang out with Gamma Liz. Um, and so she's going to join me for the stream and it's going to be a great time. She is absolutely brilliant and hilarious and I am really looking forward to it. So thank you all for joining me for this cute little game. Thanks for joining me and talking with your good questions and stuff. And I'll see you next month, okay? Have a great night. <laughs>